female scandal involving some of the world's top climate change scientists has started. Last November, thousands of private messages taken from computers at the University of East Anglia's Climate Research Unit were posted on the internet. Well, our correspondent Daniel Bircher has been listening to Samuel Russell, who's heading the investigation. What we've heard today, uh, really the terms of reference of this review, what the panel will look at and how they will carry out that work. A panel of six looking at this, and uh, they've set out exactly which areas they'll focus on. They going to examine these hacked emails uh, and other information to see if there's any evidence of manipulation or suppression of data as has been alleged in some quarters. They say the focus will be on honesty, rigor and openness uh, with which the CRU, the Climatic Research Unit, handled its data. Uh, it'll also look at how the data was assembled and how that uh, would have been subject to peer review and whether it measures up to best scientific practice. They'll also see if those practices conform to freedom of information laws. In other words, uh, if information when it was asked for was given correctly. It's just as important, though, to point out what it will not be looking at. It's not actually looking at the science, uh, the conclusions of the work done at the University of East Anglia. There's going to be a separate review involving the Royal Society that will look at that. And it will not consider the fundamental science of climate change, so make any judgments whether that science is correct or not. One question which has been asked is how independent this panel can be given that this work is being funded by the university itself. And that was a question that was put several times to Samuel Russell, who's chairing this, at a, a news conference this morning. It did not occur to me to seek independent funding. I was approached by the Vice-Chancellor to do this, uh, and he made the undertakings that I've already mentioned about resources being available, uh, access to uh, expert inputs or whatever we, we might need. Um, the thing that enables me to, 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 to look you in the eye and say we are independent is because we are. And uh, the University of East Anglia are not influencing the choice of these people. Uh, they're not influencing the way we're doing this today. They're not influencing our, anything to do with the setting up of the website and the calling for evidence. And they won't have anything to do with the consideration that we give. Now, you might very well say you'd expect me to say that, but I, I, I can only say that I, I earnestly believe that to be true. Now, the University of East Anglia has welcomed the start of this review, and the Vice-Chancellor of Research at the University, Professor Trevor Davis, said that he had confidence in the university's science. We wait to see what the outcome of the, the Muir Russell review shows. Um, in terms of the science, I have no concerns whatsoever. Um, I think that some of the remarks that have been picked out of the, uh, the emails appear to be unfortunate, but they are highly selective remarks from a very small number of emails. Now, as to the wider context, the panel say that uh, it's not only looking at what's happened in the past, but there'll be recommendations for best practice in future, and that that may have broader implications for scientific institutions uh, carrying out other work as well. A senior civil servant is investigating whether scientists at the University of East Anglia conspired to beef up evidence that climate change is man-made. The allegations arose after a series of confidential emails were posted on the Internet last November. Well, ahead of the investigation, Sir Muir Russell said the aim was to understand how the handling of the data affected the climate debate. The aim of this is to understand how scientific data was handled, stored, used, made available, how it contributed to the development of scientific knowledge, which is an essential building block of that big debate about climate science and all the other issues that have come out about the climate over the last few months. This is one of the building blocks, and we need to be sure that it's a solid one, or if it's not a solid one, what, 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 what needs to be done. Well, Emma Birchley is at the Science and Media Centre in central London, where the review is taking place. Um, hello to you, Emma. So j just for clarification on this, the panel will be looking into how this information came into the public domain, or the... Um, the information, how much credibility it should have? Well, the actual uh, issue of how this information became public, uh, how the, the, the database was hacked, uh, is actually being investigated by Norfolk Police. 
and when it comes to the scientific evidence appraising that, that's being done uh, as an independent investigation that's being put together by the University of East Anglia alongside the Royal Society. What this investigation is all about is the procedures at the UEA's Climatic Research Unit. This is a world-renowned unit which has a great deal of respect. Then in November, more than 1,000 emails are leaked, 3,000 other documents, and the suggestion from some of those emails that were made public uh, was that data was being manipulated. So today we were given the framework of this independent investigation that's going to be carried out. Now, first thing they're going to do is look and see if there's been any evidence of poor scientific practice. So was any of the um, uh, data suppressed or manipulated? They're also going to look at freedom of information procedures uh, because one of the main issues here and one of the things that the climate change skeptics have real issues with is the fact that it appeared from the emails that certain data was being going to be deleted from emails to make sure uh, that it couldn't be released to people uh, making requests under freedom of information legislation and the third thing they're going to look at is whether the unit unit itself should have had better procedures um, for keeping data safe and just a quick thought about how uh, that impacts on the climate debate itself Well, this obviously has had a major impact. It really flared up uh, in November when this all came out. Uh, there, there have been sceptics all along who've questioned uh, whether the evidence and whether the data out there really does support the argument uh, that man is, man's activities is behind global warming. And they say that this evidence uh, that has been released in these emails uh, simply adds fuel to their argument. Uh, so that really has caused a great deal of concern for people who genuinely believe that global warming is happening and it's down to human activity. Uh, and a recent poll actually did reveal uh, that the public since November, since uh, this uproar began, are becoming increasingly sceptical. So that is causing concern for the climate change scientists. Okay, Emma, thank you.